right, everybody. Um, you should have one of these handouts. If you don't have one, uh, just raise your hand, and uh, we'll try and get one to you. You need it for your notes page on today. At the end of service, you're going to get another one that looks like this. It was just too much. I'm cramming four messages into two uh, just so that the singles can get uh, totally uh, clear on what I believe God's asked them to do. You'll get this one on the way out. It'll be on the online as well, so you can pick it up. Uh, all of this, by the way, all of, all of what's in here is in, is in the books Jed and I wrote about 12 years ago uh, when we were singles pastors at my home church, uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. And so let's see if we can jump in. Uh, by the way, thank you so much if you're in the atrium. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, dealing with just horrible parking situations just to come and be a part of our experience. We're honored that you're here. Thank you so much for being here. Like, let's see if we can go to the word of the Lord. If you're in the atrium, I want you to stand. If you're in the auditorium, I want you to stand. If you're online, I want you to stand. Everybody stand. Let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 4. <clears throat> And let's see what God has to say to us today. My point uh, today is the significance and the importance of community in your decision making. Uh, Solomon, the wisest man that's ever lived, here's what he says about this issue called community. Everybody, let's read it together. Here we go. Read it with me. Two are. See what he says? Hey, yeah, to maximize your work. Two are better than one. Next verse. Four. Who falls when there is not another to lift him up. In other words, when you're walking, one of you fall. If you're by yourself, nobody's there to lift you up. Come on now. The reason you need a community of people around you is to help you make wise decisions and for them to help you along the way. Verse, verse number 11. Furthermore, if two the imagery is here in battle, the imagery is you're in a foxhole, so to speak, and two keeps you warm in the wintertime. If you're by yourself, you're worried about the enemy coming, and you're also now worried about you being cold. That's the significance of two. Last verse, here we go. And if one... Ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you, you're always in a spiritual battle. Singles are the number one weapon of choice for the kingdom of God because you get to live an undivided life. The enemy wants nothing more, nothing more than ruining your life, than creating division, than creating confusion for singles. And the reason why it's significant for every single to realize this is because God wants to use you to accomplish his purposes. But if you get distracted by the philosophies of this world and the dating concepts of this world, it will always keep you distracted. You may be seated. <clears throat> if you missed last week's sermon, just get the tape. If you can't afford it, it's our gift to you. Or you can go online and pick it up. Uh, you can do that easily as well. All right, number one, uh, we have a divorce problem because we have a dating problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a divorce problem because of how people get together. Usually people get together because of their desperation, uh, and because of that you enter into marriage ill-prepared, and because you do, it's only a matter of time before you get a divorce. Many people believe that you get married for what you can get. You don't, you get married for what you can give. The biblical process of why you get married is not for what you can get. It's for what you can give. Nobody tells you that, but it's the truth. And listen, you will be tested. Not maybe. You will be tested in marriage as to whether or not you got married to get or you, can, or you got married to give. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you again. Uh, the reason people get married is to, get, is to be happy. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason they get a divorce is to get happy. And therefore, the only reason, it, the reason that's the case is because I want what I want and I want it now. So before you get married, I want to get married. I want what I want and I want it now. It makes me happy. So therefore you get married. The reason, well, as soon as a person get on your last nerve, I want what I want and I want it now. I don't want to be married anymore because I still want to be happy. And we have traded happiness for holiness. 
ladies and gentlemen, this plagues our culture. And we got to stop it somewhere because our kids are being influenced by it. Because when you throw in the towel, you've now given them an option to throw in the towel too. Therefore, make your decisions wisely. Dating, marriage, second most important decision you'll ever make, which is why you need to make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you're making a wise decision. In light of that, let's see what God has to say to us on today. The current dating wisdom has caused broken hearts, cohabitation rates to increase, uh, 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 out of wedlock births, divorce rates skyrocketing, promiscuity like you've never seen it before, date rape, sexual preferences changes. All because of the current dating system. It's broke, you just don't want to admit it. It comes from, I, I, I care more about my feelings than my faith. That's where it comes from. I care more about my preferences than my purpose. That's where it comes from. And I'm trying to suggest to you today that we've got to ask God, God, how do you want us to do this? That's the question we're trying to answer today. And in order to get to that answer, we've got to look at just some of the things and how it's caused major damage in our culture today. Here's some of the false modern day relationship ideologies that you have convinced yourself and you've believed in. And they're all false. Here it is, number one. I'll give you six of them, then I'm done. Number one, you have to have it all together before you get married. You couldn't tell the last generation that. They didn't have all the stuff you got today. Who says you have to start making six figures, have your own house before you get married? Come on, man. You don't want to get married then because they might be marrying you for the wrong reason. You want to get married when you broke. Now you know they're following you for the right, for the right reason. I, I tell you all this all the time. When I got married, I, was, I know my wife loved me. You know why I know my wife loved me? Because I was making $10 an hour. She was making 40000 you know why I know I love it? She loved me because I was driving a broke down Toyota Corolla that she had to wind the windows up and she had to come out of her house without her makeup, get to the destination, put her makeup on because I had no AC in the summer in Dallas. I know this girl loved me. She ain't following me. I was a broke down Jamaican that didn't have a haircut. She had to teach me, Joker, you need to, ain't no man going to follow a man, black man that is, without a haircut. You got to get a haircut, Joker. You got to get some edges. Somebody got to edge something. <laughs> I'm from Jamaica. I'm like, ain't nobody need no edges. That's $30. I ain't paying $30. I'm good. I ain't lying. I'm telling you the truth. And she had to be real with me and say, listen, if, you, if you're going to Jamaica, do whatever you want with your hair. But if you're going to live in America... You better realize. So, I, so, so there, there's nothing to it. You know why? Because I'm not convinced. I want to make sure that she liked me because of me, not because of what I got. She had to have vision for the future to be with me. <laughs> she did. She had to have vision. God, you might want to do something with this one. Her, she had to convince her dad of vision. Because her dad, her dad literally said, why do you want to marry somebody broke? She says, because he loves God. Her dad said, her, her dad said, okay. <laughs> Anyways, come on, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. I ain't telling y'all nothing else. Uh, uh, number two, number two, number two, number two, number two. Ha, you, <laughs> you have to have sex before you get married. Current, modern day, relationship ideology. Number three. Uh, we have to live together before we get married. Number four, I can initiate, ladies, I can initiate. I don't have to wait on no guy to approach me. I can, if I like him, I'm going to get him. Let me explain something to you. No problem. You can do it all you want. But just remember, for the rest of your life, you're going to lead him. And don't ever complain. Don't ever come to church and say, he not leading me. He never was. You loved him that way. Let me say it a little better. You don't want to be led. That's why you got what you wanted. Sister. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, number four. We have, we have to date for three years before we get married. Any man that want to date you for three years before you get married is not a leader. 
leaders know what they want. They go after it, get it, and move on. No, no, no leader got to three. What am I waiting for three years for? For what? Joker, you don't need three years. You need about a good six months. That's it. You can know. Just know the right questions to ask. Ask me offline. Pastor, what do I need to ask? I'll tell you. You can know. All you got to do is look at who she hang out with. Look at her Facebook friends or her Instagram friends, the ones that she talk all the time. Just go look at them. Go look at their pages. You'll see a mess, and I'll tell you, you married a mess. Anyways, let me go another one. Uh, I can change the person after we get married. That's the, do you see that little grunt? That's married people right there. They'll be like. <laughs> Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. I need, listen, I need someone who has lots of, of, of uh, sexual experiences. Okay. Just remember, you're going to be compared. Mm-hmm. See, you don't like that, do you? Just remember, you're going to be compared. Here's another one. Here's another one. Um, um, I need somebody... <clears throat> I need somebody who, they don't really have to be Christian, they just have to be spiritual. Okay. All right. Let's see how that goes for you. you saw, I'm telling you, all of these are false modern day dating slash relationship ideologies. I am telling you, be very, very careful. <clears throat> So what does God have to say? Last week we talked about <clears throat> who you are and how do you work through some stuff. I'm telling you right now, if you don't understand the stages of waiting, go get it, blow it up, put it on your wall so you never forget it. That's what we talked about last week. This week, my number one question was, hey, how do I find the covering? Let's talk about that for a moment. On the left side of your sheet, it tells you, am I ready for a covering? Here's how you know you're ready for a covering. Uh, is Jesus my best friend? Somebody came up to me last night talking about, hey, I know Jesus. Jesus is my best friend. Jesus is my best friend. Je I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't, don't tell nobody that. You're showing that you're unaware. You have to die daily to yourself. I want Jesus to be my best friend every day, but he ain't. He's not. Because sometimes I don't want to talk to Jesus. I want to talk to somebody I can see. Sometimes I don't want to share my stuff with Jesus first. I want to share with Jada first. I want to share with somebody else. I want to share with one of my boys. That's because I like to take it to somebody else before I take it to Jesus. I asked her, how much time you spent with Jesus yesterday? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I prayed. Okay, you don't talk to your best friend. You, you don't text your best friend like that. A friend means you're spending time with them. So, yeah, out of every month, I, I, I'm not going to stand here and tell you I spend 31 days with Jesus being my best friend. On a good month, I might get 15. When honestly, honestly, Jesus is the one that I go to for everything. And I yearn for him every single day of my life. I don't get, I, I'm not there. So that's not one that I, ever, that I ever achieve. It's a constant fight. I want Jesus to be my but it's not that easy. Number two, I love my life and I'm living on purpose. Are you kidding me? Somebody goes, yeah, I love my life. I, I love, oh, I love my life. Oh, I love my life. Y'all need to be aware, man. Do you really love your life? Let's talk about that. Come here. You love your life, right? You, lo you, lo you can't believe you get to live. You love. Okay, what's your purpose? I don't know. I mean, you can't love your life. You got to know why God left you here for you to really love your life. You got to love the fact that, I, Pastor, I am truly content with right where I'm at. Most people out there, this is all review from last week. Here's a, this is how you know you're ready for a covering. Don't come tell me, Pastor, I need a covering when you have not been laboring over these. Don't, don't tell me. Uh, are you serving faithfully somewhere? No, I'm not. I just go to church. You're not ready. Who, who are you going to ask to cover you then? Somebody that you're just going to walk up to and say, oh, yeah, cover me. Joker don't know you from nowhere. That's your problem. The same thing you want to do. You want to just go up to somebody and say, be my covering. Just like, you want to go up to some dude and say, marry me. Don't work. You got to know somebody. You got to observe them. You got to see if, listen, your covering is the person who speaks wisdom into your life. You got to make sure they got wisdom to impart. I've observed, here we go. You want to cover it? Then you need to observe them, the couple or the individual for three to six months. Next one. Come on, quickly. <clears throat> uh, am I actively dealing with my own baggage? Do you know what your baggage are? Am I ready to practice what's suggested? Will I value their time? And will I always have a spirit of gratitude? 
with my covering. If you're not, then, then quit playing games. Let's go to the next corner, the next one. Okay, how do I know, how do I find the right person? Then you're asking these questions of yourself. You're asking, is he or she, is he or she, do they have a healthy marriage? Do you want to emulate their marriage? I didn't say perfect marriage because nobody have one of those. Just a healthy one, one that's where they're trying to do what's right. Next one. Number, just put them all up. Uh, has, has, Jesus, has Jesus been their best friend? How do you know that? Uh, are they faithfully serving somewhere? Do they understand people? Ooh, this is important. Do they understand people? You got to understand who the person is that you're dealing with. You got to understand their temperament. You got to understand why they do what they do. You got to understand people. You can't just tell them what you want or what you would do because your temperament might not match theirs. You've got to do what's in their best interest, not what's in your best interest. Do they, do they, are they pursuing the fruit of the Spirit? Next one. Come on, let's go. Um, are they connected to a group? Here we go. Is the person self-aware? By the way, singles, let me tell you the best way to be self-aware. Don't miss this. Singles, 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 singles. If you're single, scoot up. Listen. Best way to be self-aware. self-aware. Go, get a, go get your roommate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go get you one. What? Pat, what you mean? I don't like living with nobody. Then don't get married. By the way, you know what a roommate does? A roommate will show you all the things that you don't like, and they will do what a husband or a wife will ultimately do. Oh, they, well, they're so nasty. They don't clean up. Out what do you think your spouse is going to do? Well, they're so, they going to do everything your spouse. And they, your, your, your future mate should thank your roommate for working out all the baggage that they don't have to ultimately work out. I'm helping somebody today. Some of you married people wish your spouse had had a roommate because it would have showed you some <laughs> It would have showed you some stuff you did not know. I'm t- best thing for you. Why? Because once you live in close proximity with somebody else, stuff's going to happen and you're going to fo- be forced to walk in the spirit. And it will show you whether or not you're ready for marriage. It will show you. Because you are deceiving yourself to think, well, when the chemistry is right and when the feeling is right, it will work everything out. No, uh, it ain't going to work not now. Just because she cute, by the way, you notice we dressed alike today. Anyways, just because, she, just because she cute, just because she got a little tail and she got a little legs and all that. Listen, listen, listen. It, this going to drop, this going to drop. The, I mean, I mean, I mean, listen, 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 listen. Listen, man, I'm trying to help somebody today. Y'all want me to be fake around here, don't you? It's going to happen. So don't get so enamored based on that. What matters is her character. It really does matter. And if you make decisions based on how she looks and not based on her character... I am sorry for you because you're going to find out her character. And I hope you made the right decision. Authentic living, then they have to have discernment and wisdom. Here we go. Uh, Let me show you the next chart on the right-hand side of your page. Listen, this is so huge. I want to show you how ladies think, and I want to show you how guys think. When it comes to dating, this is how the the world says all of this is part of the dating experience up until here. The Bible says all of this from here on is part of the courtship experience. So the Bible says, the world says all of this is dating experience. Listen, but I want you to watch one concept, and it's so huge. This is how God made women and men. Watch this. Everybody starts with social. We're interacting, hey, casual, acquaintances, out talking, getting to know each other a little better. We're social, right? We're doing that in groups, whatever. Then you flip it, and ladies go emotional, and guys go physical. Do I, okay, okay. I'm trying to help somebody in here today, and the devil trying to be a distraction, but he ain't going to win. I'm going to show you this truth. Guys, you meet her, you're hanging out with her, and then you go physical. You want to start touching, caressing, kissing. I need to stop doing that with my hand. Uh, uh, All that, all that, all that, all that right there, all that right there. All that right there. So you're going down a path. Now she's thinking, oh, I want to 
cry over him. Oh, he loves me so much. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I long to see him. I want to see him again. Listen, so you had an interaction with her, and you guys were close. You hugged her. You held her hand. You guys were walking. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and and you, didn't even, you didn't sleep with her yet. You just holding her hands, hugging her, kiss her on the neck. Good night. That's what's happening to her, gentlemen. That's what's happening to her. I'm not making it up. I'm telling you this. So she's thinking emotionally, oh, my gosh. Ooh, my heart's racing. Yeah, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to help you all today. The guy is thinking he has a stopwatch of his heart. He goes out with her, meets her, hey, let's hold hands. Let's see what's up, stopwatch is on. Cool, man, yeah, you're so kind. Man, you're really awesome. Man, I love your hair, your eyebrows, your lips. Man, you do that thing. Man, all that, all that. And then he kisses you on the neck and say, okay, good night. Stop. He's good, he's gone home, chilling. <laughs> chilling. You, ladies, you, you. Oh my gosh, when he held my hand. I, and then he kissed my neck, I'm not gonna bathe. I'm going to bathe everything else, but not right here. <laughs> no, you're laughing. But emotionally, it's going on. That dude is chilling. He gone through his work. He doing something. He probably hanging with another girl. Chilling. You. You, looking at your phone every day. What a text. What a text. What a... Good night. Hey, hope you had a good night. Hey, reached home safely. So, ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Just you. Happens all the time. I'm telling you, this happens all the time. This is why guys know how to wait you out. You know guys do that, right? They wait you out. They ain't calling you on Sunday because you just got the word from the Lord. So you're walking in the spirit. They, they're going to start texting you on Thursday. <clears throat> Because you went to Bible study on Wednesday, so you went to, and they're not, they don't want none Thursday. They really want some Friday night, but it's starting Thursday morning. Hey, ju just thinking about you. <laughs> Thursday evening. Hey, you got plans for this weekend? <laughs> Thursday morning. You know, I picked up something. I have a little surprise for you. Friday morning. I have a little surprise for you. They know game when they see game. They trying to respond, see what you're going to respond to see what their chances are. And if you don't respond right, then they go on to somebody else. Or no, a lot of these knuckleheads will do it to five different people at the same time. While your heart doing this. They, they, they be like, all right. I'm, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. It happens all the time. And then this one flips. And then don't sleep with them. Don't sleep with them. Right here? Are you kidding me? Because now, and some of you ladies just love some little one night stands. I'll be like, do, do these people love Jesus? They love a little one. Quit looking at me like you don't love it. And some of you do. And you just, you just throw yourself at somebody because you're so desperate. Why is only the men saying preach? <laughs> All right, you got this. Let's go to the last one. So let me show you something that I think. Um, we should be pursuing. Let me show it to you. This is, this is a, 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 a biblical dating process. No, you don't have to do it like, like I'm suggesting. I'm just saying come up with one that works for you. But make sure it's driven by the Bible. Listen now, listen now, listen. Men, let me start with you. Here's what a godly man's supposed to do. He's supposed to be on our covering. Then he's supposed to identify some character traits that he's looking at in this woman. He needs to identify these traits. He's going to identify them. And once he has their character qualities, then he's going to say, okay, let me observe to see what I find in this girl. Listen, man, so, uh, one, of our, one of our members uh, called me last week and said, Pastor, please preach this sermon real hard. 
I said, why? What, what, what's going on? She's about, she's about 60 something years old. And she says, Pastor, you don't understand. To me, I got to serve my husband right now. My husband, he can't, he can't pee on his own. He can't clean up his stuff. He can't do nothing. I got, he just is there, and I've got to bathe him. I got to clean him up after he poo. I got to clean him up after he pee. I got to make sure. And all of this time, Pastor, he's talking trash to me. She says, Pastor, preach, please let them know that they're going to be tested if they're in this just for what they can get or if they're in it for what they're there to give. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know. Many of us just get mad because, yeah, give me, give me what I want. Oh, my gosh, this is my trophy wife. Oh, my God. Listen, man, listen. The stakes are too high. Man, when you get the chance, you, this lady right here, man, man, your job is to, is, to, is to protect her heart. She's your sister, my Bible says. So since she's your sister, you don't just roll up. You know how she is. And when, she, when you start talking to her, you know if you, if you zoom in on her, her heart's going to start to flutter. So why would you want to do that if you don't have a plan? Gentlemen, you're a God godly man. Once you identify the traits, that's what you're looking for. Then you don't talk to her until you see some of these traits. Don't just look at how she looks. Anybody can pad something. Anybody can wear any kind of hair. You can get any. You want Brazilian hair? You want what? Anybody can get that. I'm trying to, I promise you, man. Listen, listen, gentlemen. If you're not ready, then don't step to her. If you have baggage and you just want to get close to a girl just because you want her to be your best friend, then go get help with your baggage. But don't try it on these ladies. By the way, by the way, just so that you know, I ain't perfect. I can show you. I can tell you a bunch of ladies I messed up. Because I, 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 here's all I'm grateful to God for. That it, that it matters not how you start but how you end. And so, yeah, you've jacked it up before. That's cool. Then from today forward... Just realize that when you, when you just go as a knucklehead and just play with somebody's heart, it hurts them for years to come. So then you go fine. Then you make contact with her. Now you engage your heart. But here's the good news. You engage your heart because you've seen her before. So now you're saying, hey, I know I respond better to a broken heart than you do. So I'm saying that I'm about 60% sure, having observed you, what's going on, and that I like you. You don't know me. So you now get to observe me. And if you reject me, I'm good because I can recover quicker than you can. That's what men do. Men, step up and be open and say, you get to reject me if I'm not your type. You don't play the game with her heart. You don't do that. And by the way, men, don't go overdo it now. So next time you see somebody at one community, you, you be like, well, I can't touch you because I don't want to engage your heart. So hey, hey, hey. <laughs> don't be a dodo now. Don't be weird with it now. You go hugs. Hey, good to see you, sis. What's going on, sis? Good to see you, sis. And you keep it moving. Don't be like, well, uh, uh, hey. <laughs> Just be a weirdo with it. Anyways, here we go. So then, so then after she gets to observe you, determine whether or not you want to go. And by the way, man, set clear boundaries. Hey, I want to do this for about the next six months to just see. After six months, we're going to make a decision, and you can either be in or out. Same with me. We're good. You, this is not going on forever. I'm setting clear direction for you because that's what leaders do. Clear. There's no ambiguity. There's no let's define the relationship. You don't need that because all the time you're giving her clear direction. Can the real man stand up, please? Amen. Then you get down there, then you get mad. Ladies, 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 I got to go. Ladies, listen, ladies, then you be under covering. Then when he shows up, then you identify your traits you're looking for. Remember now, don't play the game. Ask people about him. And whenever they say something bad, blow it up. Blow it up times 100. Blow it up because it will come back at you. Then you introduce them to your covering. Then both of you try to figure out who this dude is. Then you observe for a while. Then you're going back and forth. You're having dinner with whoever your covering is, so on and so forth. Why? Because you're making the decision in community and not isolated. 
And then you make the decision together. Then you enter into a courtship. And then you determine what the marriage is going to be. And then you find a man. And listen to me. Don't you make marriage the goal. There are too many single people where it's like you're in jail. And you're just dying to get married. And once you get married, now you start telling the world, oh my gosh, we're going to the shoe picking. Then we're going to the socks picking. Then we're going to the uh, uh, cake picking. Then we're going to, and you're showing everybody as if, as if you just got out of jail. I want you to be excited about it, but just remember, you still have other single friends too. And you used to hate when they did it. So then, of course, you can show some stuff, but not every day. Keep that for your little community. Have your own little page for, for the people that you care about that want to see it. Quit putting everything on display. Because there are people that were where you were. And quit making it be like singlehood is the jail. Singlehood is the preferred life because you get to live undivided for the sake of Jesus Christ. Somebody need to tell you about that. So here we go. Just watched a movie the other day. Another movie is called The Black Panther. What most people miss about the movie is that both stars were so in love with the kingdom and their mission that they would not marry each other unless the other was fully committed to the kingdom and the mission. They said, you will not disrupt what what my king is calling me to do. You will not disrupt the mission that my king has called me to do. Therefore, you, I mean, we can, we can talk and stuff, but I ain't going down your path until you decide that you can come align with me and we can see what your mission is, what my mission is, so that we make sure we're going down the same path. I wish the king of kings had some Christians who understand that they ought to make their master first. And after their master, then they ought to know their mission clearly. And I am not fooling with you until you see how my mission and how we together can create something greater than we could on our own. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to help somebody today. I really am. So here we go. As we continue in our series, we're doing this all the way until Easter. I'm, 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 I'm pleading with the men in the house. Will you please lead and will you please lead your sisters in the Lord so that even if you approach her and it doesn't work out, she don't have to change churches because you didn't lead her well. She don't have to, she don't have to say, well, 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 I can't stand seeing him because you treated her with dignity and with honor and you cherished and guarded her heart. Of course she's supposed to guard her own heart, but you have the responsibility. If you're going to love somebody more than you love yourself, then you have this responsibility to model for her what it looks like when you just don't exist for you and exist to get in her pants. But you exist because you know she's going to be a better Christian because God crossed our paths together. And then ladies, don't throw yourself at people. They're waiting for you in your desperation to simply give up. God's called you for a purpose. Find out what that purpose is and live according to it for his glory and for his honor. Father, Will you help us please do what only you can? And that is help us to bring all of life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and to love you and to live for your kingdom, not our own. To live for an audience of one, that's Jesus. Then help us to embrace a, a concept of, of courtship that, that, that's in concert with your word and not in concert with how we feel or our preferences train us in godliness allow the older woman to disciple the younger woman and the older men to disciple the younger men so we know how to walk with God the stakes are too high raise up a generation that will live differently because of all that the master has done for us we pray this in the master's name of Jesus everybody said don't move yet, don't move yet. Here's what I want you to do, two things. Men, remember, we have the breakfast coming up. And men, remember, we have Bible study coming up. Singles, remember, uh, as we continue in this series, remember, singles, that we're going to do this on the lounge evening, and you get to ask any questions. Jada is going to take the 40 and over. I'm going to take the 18 to 40. 
I'm going to see how it goes. Uh, you're going to, your, your section is going to be illuminated in a moment. When it is, then you can go. Now listen, 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 listen. You can go get the handout. Everybody gets one as you leave. They'll be in those doors. They'll be in those doors. They'll be everywhere. You can get them as well. Thanks so much for being here. As your section is illuminated, you can leave. If you want prayer, singles only. If you want prayer, then when everybody else is going out or when your section is not illuminated, just come on down. We'd, we'd consider it an honor to pray for you. Thanks so much for being here. God bless. You're dismissed in sections. Take a look at it.